Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars. You're watching another one of my YouTube guitar building videos. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope that by the end of this video, I'll have earned the honor and privilege of your subscription. And of course, everybody is watching. If you enjoy this video, get anything out of it, I would appreciate if you would click that thumbs up button down below. That's so important to the algorithm. And of course, uh, if you'd like to take your support to the next level, you can visit eGuitarPlants.com or my Highline Guitars merch store. There's links in the description below. And any purchase that you make there is gonna help support this channel so that I can keep building guitars and making videos about how I build guitars. Uh, of course, uh, if you wanna keep it simple, you can click the thanks button and leave a tip in the amount that you think is fair. Now, what I'm gonna talk about in today's video is a comment that a viewer sent me last week. Uh, it was to an old video that I had made where I was talking about different species of wood that we use when building guitars. And in his comment, he mentioned that he was using a species of wood that's common where he lives, which is Australia. And the species of wood in particular that he mentioned was called Merbau or Merbo. Uh, how it's pronounced, I think, depends uh, where you live in the world. I watched a couple of different YouTube videos on that specific species of wood, and people were pronouncing it differently. So I'll spell it out down here so that you can at least see uh, how it's spelled. And what was interesting about this was I had heard of Merbau before. I've seen it at my local lumber supplier on a couple of occasions. But because I wasn't familiar with the, the species of wood and its properties, I had never really paid that much attention to it. So after this viewer left that comment, I decided that I would take a, a closer look at this species of wood and find out what the, the characteristics are. And whenever I do research on wood, one of the places I hit the most frequent is called the Wood Database. And I'll put a link in the description below to that website. I'll show it here as well, so that you can get an idea of what is available on that website. But it's a great resource for understanding all the different characteristics and properties of the different species of wood that we like to use when building guitars. And it also is great for furniture makers and any anybody who makes projects that are involving wood. You can find out whether a species of wood you're thinking of using might be a good choice for um, whatever your project is. At any rate, one of the uh, features that is often described is a person's potential to have an allergic reaction to the wood. Now, as it turns out, Murabao has that potential. So when I saw that, I started to think, you know, I never really looked into this subject of allergic reactions to wood before because personally, I don't have any reactions to any of the different species that I've ever used before, at least none that I'm aware of. Um, you know, I'm, I have a fairly high tolerance for pain, so if I get a, a rash from wood dust, I probably won't even notice it. So it's never been an issue that I've had to be concerned with. But I have talked to people in the past who have had some pretty severe reactions to different species of wood. Now, when I say reactions, that can be anything from lung irritation, eye irritation, uh, or uh, skin irritation. Uh, sometimes exposure by touching the wood or having the wood touch you can cause, um, you know, uh, surface um, irritation. Um, there's a term for it. Um, uh, I think it's called contact dermatitis. Uh, I'm, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist, and I'm certainly not an allergist, so take that into consideration as I talk about this in this video. Uh, I'm merely trying to give you some advice about what to be concerned about. And um, since I never had this issue, I didn't really pay that much attention to it, but I, I got to thinking about it after I read that about Merbao and knowing in the past that I've talked to people who have had allergic reactions to certain species. So I did a little bit more research uh, on the internet, which is really my main resource. Um, and what I found was there are several websites, and again, I'll put links to these websites down below, which talk about the different kinds of allergic reactions that people can have to different species of wood. And what I found was it seems like just about every species of wood that we typically use, and many more beyond that, 
In fact, it's just about every species of wood that I'm, a, that I'm familiar with, period, can cause some kind of allergic reaction. Well, the wood database has a page which describes uh, all the different types of reactions that you can have to each species of wood. And then it tells you the potential for its severity. Now, I'm not sure exactly where they get all this information, but I think it's a good resource if you're a woodworker who is contemplating the use of a certain species and you're wondering if it might cause an issue. Or if you're working with a piece of wood and you have a potential reaction, because as you know, nailing down the cause of an allergy can be really difficult to do. But if you suddenly discover you're having a reaction and you know what species of wood you've been working with, you can check the uh, wood database to see if your reaction is common to that species of wood. Now, fortunately, allergic reactions to wood are, I would say they're not uncommon, but they're not extremely common. I mean, if they were, we wouldn't be making stuff with wood. Uh, and in some folks, those reactions can be so severe that just being literally in the same room with a certain species can cause problems. But that's very, very rare. Now, the, another concern, and this is really what um, is where I'm kind of focused on, is not my uh, re allergic reaction to, to different species of wood, but the reaction of a potential customers to the wood that I used in a particular guitar build. I'm always looking to use interesting and unique woods when I build a guitar. But if I'm gonna sell that guitar to somebody else, I don't want the liability of them having an allergic reaction to whatever wood was used in that. Now, I don't think that that would necessarily get me in trouble with the law, <laughs> but I don't want to have a reputation of uh, selling guitars that are made of woods that cause allergic reactions in people. So I want to make sure that the wood that I use is, for the most part, safe. Now, like I said, a lot of the woods that we use can trigger certain types of allergic reactions. But I think literally anything in existence can trigger an allergic reaction. So when it comes to choosing specific woods, I'll use woods that are have a lower potential for causing reaction. And those are gonna be the woods like your mahoganies, your maple, uh, rosewood, ebony, uh, the common woods that we use in guitar building. But if I wanna use something exotic, maybe a really cool figured top or some sort of exotic grain, I'm gonna make sure that that wood isn't going to trigger or has a high potential to cause some sort of allergic reaction into a potential uh, customer. Now, one of the woods that I noticed when looking through this uh, database was uh, a wood called Greenheart. And this would be a good example of an extreme situation. Uh, Greenheart seems to be quite toxic. And I, I think if somebody were to try to sell me some cheap Greenheart because of its other possibilities uh, as, a, as a hardwood for building guitars, I would have to say no because the, the potential for an allergic reaction is far greater in that particular species than just about any other species. And it's not just one type of allergic reaction. It's eyes, lungs, skin, heart. Everything can be affected. It's a very toxic and poisonous wood, so you don't want don't to mess with that. So not that I ever think that would be an issue. But when it comes to other species of wood and their potential for uh, an allergic reaction. If you're using something you're not familiar with or are tempted to use something that might look exotic that you've never used, you might want to check into it, especially if you're going to be selling your guitar to somebody else, just to see what the potential for an allergic reaction is. And if it's low, go for it. I would say you're probably safe to use it. But if there's any question or concern and you're worried about potential liability or having an instrument returned, um, then I would say probably avoid that species of wood. So uh, as I said, I'm going to leave uh, links in the description below for some of the websites that you can uh, visit to do some research on different species of wood. And they're handy to bookmark so that if down the road you want to use a certain species, you can quickly look it up to see what the potential is. Now, the wood database is also a great resource for the different 
characteristics and features of different types of wood. So if you're worried about whether a particular wood is going to make a good guitar neck or fretboard, or if it's easy to work with, or it chips out or it tears out, or if it's um, considered an endangered species and could pose problems with shipping a guitar internationally, um, you can find that information on the wood database. So, uh, great resource. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's given you some food for thought. Let me know in the comments down below what your experience has been with allergic reactions to wood. Um, it's the, one of those things where I've always been living in some sense of fear that at some point I would all of a sudden develop an allergy to mahogany or maple, in which case I'm pretty much done. <laughs> but so far, knock on wood, this piece of alder here, uh, I haven't had any sort of reaction. Uh, although I am experimenting with 3D printed guitars, but you know, perhaps I could develop a, an allergic reaction to the filament that we use to 3D print uh, uh, products. So who knows? But I hope you found this video to be useful. So give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, do so. Uh, visit eGuitarPlans.com or my Highland Guitars merch store. and um, Or click the thanks button down below. And until the next episode, take care, stay safe, and I hope you'll be back for more future guitar building videos.